Welcome back to the Papa Meat channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. Today, I just got done watching Evil Dead Rise! Which, if you haven't heard of the Evil Dead franchise, let me tell you, it started in the early 80s. <sighs> Take me back. Sam Raimi directs probably one of the most influential B-horror films of all time, Evil Dead. So the original Evil Dead is about a bunch of friends going out, having a good weekend, trying to get their dicks and sucked, it sucked, everything, you know what I mean? Essentially, Bruce Campbell's character, Ash, is having the time of his life, and then somebody finds some evil, spooky tapes, presses record, and it turns out that a guy was doing experiments, like weird rituals out here with his family, and all hell breaks loose, and people die, and people get resurrected, and demons happen, and you see Bruce Campbell cut off his arm, he uses a chainsaw, and for the sequel, he was just like, I'm just gonna make the same movie, except this time, bigger budget, it's going more into slapstick range of, you know, comedy and stuff like that. It's kind of the exact same thing, except way better, in my opinion, in the second movie. Except I think you get you get rid of all the friends. So it's just Bruce Campbell in his sweet honey. His sweet honey thing. You know, cuts off his hand again, makes the little chainsaw thing. Big chainsaw. You're gonna, so that's going to be a reoccurring theme. Army of Darkness uh, goes back in time. Eh, don't really need to talk about that. It's not really relevant. And then Sam Raimi kind of took like a big, fat little bit of a break. And he made some Spider-Man movies, some Spidey-Man movies. He made that movie Drag Me to Hell. And then he did <gasps> Doctor Strange. Oh my word, it's raining outside. It's so wet. And so am I over today's sponsor. Bad Dragon Toys! You know, the kind. This is for mommies and daddies only. If you're under the age of 18, then skip this ad, okay? Thank you. Bad Dragon has been a great sponsor of this channel for the whole year so far. And I want all of my fans to go check out Bad Dragon if you're in the need for something spicy for your bedroom. Um, they have been such a great, great sponsor. I love them. All of their products are fucking beautifully made, handcrafted to perfection. The quality is there. The company is so undeniably wholesome in such a weird way that uh, it's I, I cannot stress to you how much I love this company and how much they have supported this channel and have been so good to us. So please, if you're in the market for something fun for yourself or for a significant other, please check it out. Maybe you can find something you like for yourself or for them. Or maybe you just, I don't know, experiment. Thank you, Bad Dragon, for sponsoring this video. We love you for real. Bad Dragon, you are the fucking best. Kisses. Back to the video. So that brings us to 2013, the first official, like, reboot of the series. The Evil Dead franchise is very weird in that way. They don't really, like, the only continuation of the story, really, is from Evil Dead 2 to Army of Darkness. And then they did, like, an Ash versus the Evil Dead series. So there's, like, you know, there's some continuity, but really the core structure of the Evil Dead, which I think the Evil Dead fans like, is kind of the, the remedy of the Evil Dead movies, right? Cabin, group of friends, spooky ghost, book bound in flesh, so many demon, bad stuff happens, and demon dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the Evil Dead remedy, which for me, I love it. You know, I actually, I don't think I've met many people who were like, I, mm -mm, I don't really like that movie. Even for me, I was pleasantly surprised by the 2013 Evil Dead. It's kind of fun. It's a girl who they're, they're bringing her out there to do probably the most excruciating detox. They're trying to, she's a heroin addict, I think. She's a drug addict of some kind. And they're like, we're going to literally trap you in the woods okay i don't know if that's probably the most appropriate way to go about that but you know to each his own and it kind of follows the same tropes and we get some different kind of stuff but the biggest thing is that it's a newer age we're not in the 80s anymore this is like 2013 so special effects goes crazy very gruesome it takes the gruesome nature of the 80s and elevates it once more and this time you're like okay cool i like this new girl i like the situation going on here also they missed the opportunity to play raining blood at the end of the movie it re literally rains blood perfect opportunity i would say to a movie studio i bet that some Song isn't that expensive? It, it would, would it have been cheesy? Yeah! But I would have liked it. And that brings us basically to now. I think everything Evil Dead has touched has been pretty good. I mean, pretty fucking solid. It's a fun, it's a fun series. You know, it's that you know what you're going into, and that's all that really matters because you're there to have fun, because you like the name, you like the brand. And I think Evil Dead Rise, uh, I think it holds up to the brand name. So before we go into the uh, rating, I'm going to say spoilers here. And if you want a general rating for it, I give it a 7 out of 10. All right, spoils time. The movie introduces us. They do uh, a nice fake out thing at the beginning where we start on a lake. So you're kind of like, oh, here we go again. Oh, another cabin. But it turns out that it's the day before the actual movie. 24 hours before. Not a lot of time really in 24 hours, but it is what it is. But I will say that I was like, oh, okay. Very, I mean, I knew, I saw the trailers. I knew what was going on, but it was still nice to be like, okay, we're not in the middle of nowhere. We're in LA area-ish with a very progressive family. This is another thing. There's a couple new things that happen in this movie that I think 
like is kind of important and cool to do, I guess. Uh, one, we're not in the cabin, we're in a city, in an apartment. Two, they've introduced children to the mix. Usually before it's just teenagers and they're trying to, you know, but in this one, it's kids and a family. And then three, they've kind of stripped away the traditional family that's also been there before. Usually beforehand, the family that was there was like, I'm the fa I'm the father and I'm the conservative mom and I'm the sweetheart daughter kind of thing. In this one, it's a single mom. Her husband just left her. Her sister, who is a guitar tech, just learned she's pregnant. And the mom who is single has three children, a trans boy and two daughters. It's a progressive family thing. And I know that people are gonna see this and they're gonna be like, oh god, this movie's woke! <sighs> fuck off. It's a more new age, new kind of thing. We're not taking any of the tropes from the past. We're trying something completely new. That's refreshing. That's fun. Why keep rehashing all the same stuff? Like I saw people online complaining like, oh, if Bruce Campbell's not the movie, this is not even Evil Dead. If Ash isn't here to put the chainsaw all on his hand, then why the fuck am I going? And uh, the answer to that is to try new things. Isn't that fun? Say it with me. Try new things. You did. It's cool to have the same kind of formula, but just mix up the elements a little bit. It's still the same thing, but just kind of, you have your mixing bowl here and you just, you do one of the, maybe you do one of the, these kind of things. It's fun. But let's get into the actual meat of the movie. It was, it's an interesting experience. I feel like a lot of times I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Ooh, that's fun. Ooh, okay. It felt very, not even polarizing. It was just like a lot of like dumb things happen, but a lot of cool stuff happens too. It's very odd. One of the big things at the beginning is like just a lot of red herrings. You ever see a movie where it's just like a character does something and you're like, yes, I see that. That's gonna be applicable later on in the movie. That's a red herring, right? Uh, I think it's more like Chekhov's gun. Basically things happen, like characters are doing obvious things that the director is like, hey, remember that? Okay. And then later on, the thing happens and he's like, this, see? <laughs> It's a full circle! You know, it is what it is, but if you're being critical, it's just like very distracting. When somebody like goes in and like they stop and they're clicking the thing and they're like, God dang, this, this dang garage just doesn't want to open. You're kind of like, I wonder if they're going to have issues with the garage later. <laughs> There's one incident where the neighbor comes out and he's just like, my damn cats are in the vents. My cats are in the vents. They go all over to people's apartments. They, my cats are up there. I don't, my cat- It's one of those sayings, once again, you're just like, I hope nothing gets into the vents and gets inside the apartment. Oh yeah, then the wood chipper, they pull in and you see a giant wood chipper. There's an earthquake, we'll get to that in a sec. The wood chipper thing opens and the character's like, <sighs> The wood chipper gate opened. This this industrial grade wood chipper that's parked in an apartment garage. What the hell? There's some moments like that. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but there's, a, there's quite a bit of them. It was sure would be crazy if that wood chipper turned on at some point in the movie. I bet you they're gonna put somebody's body in that. <laughs> Just like, I mean, I don't know. Just to like set some of the stuff up. The mom is with the kids, they're alone there. And the building that they're living in is supposed to be demolished in a month. And there's still tons of families living in there as if the building isn't getting demolished in a month. <laughs> It's like another thing where I was like, why is there so many people living in this like fucking demolished building? And then you have the mom's sister coming in because she's a cool guitar tech and she's preggers. Mm. She's a guitar tech. This is totally going to not vibe with my career. I'm not ready to be a mom. But the guitar tech sister doesn't realize that the mom and her husband have been split up. So to have a serious conversation, they say, kids, go get some pizza. Me and your aunt have to talk. And they go to ship them off to get some pizza. Holy. That's <laughs> Evil Dead's really cool. <laughs> it's a good movie. Did I upset you, Sam Raimi? <laughs> oh my God, that was that crazy. Fucking Jesus fucking Christ. I gave it, I said I liked it. I liked the movie. I don't know why you're pissed off at me, dude. Jesus. I like got I'm saying it as if he's dead, he's alive. Sam Raimi dies and he sits in his chair and his ghost goes and haunts everybody who doesn't like the movies. God, what was I even on? Oh yeah, so yeah, so then the kids go get the pizza, but while they're gone, there's a big earthquake because they're in LA and that happens. Just like how my room here almost exploded from the lightning. Remember that? I really hope that gets picked up in the footage. I thought you could see the yeah, you could see the light. I, they're 
you're probably gonna see a giant flash right here. Good fucking lord. But uh, essentially, there's a giant earthquake, and this um, cracks the foundation of this parking garage. And as the kids are walking back with their pizza, the big earthquake happens. They're all crazy and scared. And then the brother or whatever sees that there is a hole in the garage. And he's like, yeah, there's a hole over here. And he's like, it's a bank vault. And then he goes down there, which I, you know, forgive my ignorance, but it just, I was just like, there's their apartments on top of a bank. And then he gets down there and it's like all religious paraphernalia. Like there's tons of crosses. And he's like, yeah, this thing probably hasn't been open for like a hundred years. I'm like, what bank is this? It's like the Catholic church bank. Essentially to kind of speed through it, there's some spooky moments with some crosses and stuff, but he finds the, the LPs. Oh, and that's another kind of thing is that earlier he's in his room dancing and he's like, I'm a DJ. And that was just one of the sayings. And he's like, oh my God, I found some sweet LPs. And I'm like, that's convenient. But essentially he grabs the LPs and he grabs the books and he brings it up to his house. And that's when all hell breaks loose. He tries opening up the book like a fucking ape. The binding of the book are these teeth. And he's like, let me rip at these sharp teeth. And he prickles his hand and blood goes. Here's another one. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a little farther away, thank God. <laughs> It's still a rumbling. But essentially, yeah, the finger gets pricked just like in Evil Dead fashion. A little bit of blood gets into the book and that kind of starts the whole ritual. And he plays the LP and it says the typical ritual seance and the demon possesses the mom. And I will say that right now that the mom actor gives the strongest performance. I like even just the mom as the demon. And she just, it's just really good. Really creepy, great line deliveries and stuff. They do a lot of callbacks. Like when she gets possessed, it's very reminiscent of like every tree scene before in the Evil Dead series where it's like she gets strung up, but it's of this time because typically roots go inside the that doesn't happen this time thank god that's where we really start to pole vault ourselves forward into this movie she comes in she starts doing some crazy stuff starts attacking people she gets in this bath it's a big montage of craziness that you should go see but i will say uh, you know with the evil dead thing you want to see if the kills are there how fun are the kills and the kills are great they utilize the aspect of children in a good way because usually a lot of times especially american audiences if there's a kid in the movie you're like about 98 uh, percent of the time you're like this eh, there's nothing gonna happen to that kid but luckily in this one spoil there's a lot of death. It's fun. A lot of getting hurt. A lot of fucking screaming, crying, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of emotional depth to even just like being, and I could be the American side of myself, but there's a lot of like emotional depth with just like the innocence of a child and having that like nurtured or doing whatever. So I, you know, just going off that merit, you're just kind of like, you know, good for you for going there. The little little girl, she survives, but I, mean, come on. I think that if they would have done any, anything to kill a little girl, I think they were probably fighting the NC-17 rating. I wonder how much of a lot of the creative decisions in this were because of that. If you go too far, you risk losing that R rating. And I think that they won't even let you show that in theaters at NC-17 or like select theaters or something. So so we get a lot of great kills or great interactions. Cheese greater to the leg. Mm, that's a rough one. It's definitely farther away now. There's a part where the mom has her tattoo gun because the mom is a tattoo artist and she's getting ready to tattoo her daughter's eyeball. And the daughter like turns her cheek and she tattoos her cheek and it looks brutal. But at the same time, I'm like, man, come on, just go there. Tattoo the fucking little girl's eye. It's dangling right there. And it's like, I want to be like, ah, I'm just kidding. And I just want to be like, fuck it, tattoo her eye. And then she's like, her eye is just filled with like black ink. I mean, fucking brutal. But you know, they still tattoo her cheek and do a bunch of other shit. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? From there, there's like a bunch of like crazy things, people getting stabbed. A lot of the residents on the other side of the floor, they all get killed in a very fun way. You see it all through the peephole of the apartment looking in and it kind of, you know, it does feel kind of cheap because you want to have more. I wanted to have more with the people on the floor. You get to see a child get their arms ripped off and thrown in. A guy gets his fucking face bit and she sucks out his eyeball. But then it's kind of like, it's like I said, it's one of those moments where you're like, ooh, but then she spits the eyeball in a kid's mouth and he chokes on it. And that's how he dies. And I'm like, that's really dumb. What? Like literally she's like, boop. And he's like, boop. And it's like a fucking like 2000s movie. It's like a Freddy got fingered or something like that. That's what it felt like. They don't do enough to warrant the comedy like an Evil Dead 2 where it's like very over the top and goofy. Like the blood is just so over the top that it's comical. It's like they are trying to take it seriously, but then they try to introduce some comedy, but it just comes off kind of, I don't know, cringe. A lot of great moments though. I mean, just like the mom throwing up, she throws up like an obnoxious amount of what looks like milk. Like it's all over the place and she falls in it. And it's just gross. The sound is disgusting. 
interesting. It's just a lot of fun. Watching all of the horribly violent stuff in this film, it's just a really good time. I mean, like, it's weird saying that because I'm just like, yeah, I wish the little girl died. I really think that I'd say that with my life, but at the same time, I'm like, if we're in this ride together, kind of like, um, you know, even something like a Terrifier 2 where it's just like, it's a sadistic clown. They don't pull back anything. They kind of just always are like, this is just what he does. And like, whoever's in his way is going to, you know, get tore up. It isn't just like an innocent death. It's like gruesome, violating mess. That's But in return, it makes it comical because of how just over the top it is. It's just so grandiose and stupid that uh, it works out. And this one, I just feel like there's a lot of little moments where it could have had something really brutal or fun or even visually fun happen, but they kind of pull back just for the sake of being like, well, I mean, it's a kid. It's a kid, which I get it, but we're already playing the game. Just roll the dice, baby. All right. A lot of the cinematography felt really great. A lot of times when something like, you know, one of those callbacks of like, oh, I'm a tattoo artist. This is my tattoo gun. Better watch out. It's painful. There would be like a kind of a moment where you're like, oh. Okay, but then the, a new shot would come in and there's just a lot of artistic inspiration with how things are framed up, the angles we use, like really trying to sink in and like be as creative and as like fun to look at as possible. Like each little frame that we get to go in, like there's a great scene where the mom's sister is putting her hand in the water, but we do kind of a fun, like almost call back to when Freddie puts his hand out of the water in Nightmare on Elm Street. And it just looks really great. And all the callbacks in these movies, cause there, I feel like there was a, a couple different callbacks, like the ones that are notable are the Shining and the elevator door spooting out blood at the end. And then also even a bit of a stretch here, but the way the mom even like bites this guy's face and sucks out his eye felt very reminiscent of uh, From Beyond. Little stuff like that. It's like, it's not like it's, um, it's not as egregious as like naming the building like Romero Drive or something where it's like, this one's for you, George Romero. <laughs> We're fans. It just feels like fun ways to kind of introduce an already like established brand and like the horror community and kind of showing love in other ways, which I thought was kind of cool but just very artistic and beautiful moments and like just really a lot of these scenes too the way they're staged the way they flow throughout this apartment because it's this open concept kind of apartment we're able to kind of like sway through the apartment and really build a lot of great tension and anxiety just through the corridors or the spaces that we're given it's just a lot of fun i think that's really well executed pretty cool whenever you do these remakes you have to justify like well, why did we what was different where have we evolved in these processes of like yeah it's an evil dead film but what do they do different what do they do new and with this one it was kind of cool that in at the end, uh, spoilers. Once again, I just want to, you know, I, have to, I keep reset. I've already said it once, so fuck you. At the end, the mom's like limbs are all ripped up, and the daughter's like two, or the son and the daughter are both possessed, and only the aunt and the little girl are alive. And the son and daughter crawl inside of the mom, and it creates this like really fun, kind of like demonic monster. It's not practical. They were much stronger separated, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But the mom does get her leg and arm blown off. So I think the justification was like, this puts the mom still in a threatening position. And then it's also like a weird thing with like connectivity and family and your family is now conjoined into a monster attacking you. The only complaint that I had with that, because visually I think it looks really fun. It's very body horror and John Carpenter the Thing-esque with having all these things combined, kind of like the dog in that movie, which oddly once again feels like a little bit of a callback. I don't know. But I wish we would have had like more. We just kind of get them barely interacting with it. And that was like one of the problems that I had at the end of 2013's Evil Dead. When they the giant hell monster comes up, we get like two minutes with it and then she just kills it and it's over. Which is the same thing here, and it does end the same way that every Evil Dead film ends with a chainsaw. And in this one, it is gory and fun and stupid and over the top, and that's cool with them getting put into the, the wood chipper, remember the wood chipper? They get put in the wood chipper, and then the girl takes a chainsaw and like stabs it through her head and all that stuff. Kind of the same, same old, same old. Like I kind of wish that, just don't even put the chainsaw in there. You're already doing so many new things. Why, you don't need the chainsaw. And luckily there wasn't a part two where like Bruce Campbell was like the pizza man. He's like, special delivery. And people could be like, oh, Bruce! But I bet you he's somewhere in this. I feel like people are going to be like, actually, he was the homeless man outside the building or something like that. You know what I mean? I bet it's going to be something like that. But all in all, the movie is just, it's just good fun. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Evil Dead is a franchise I hold to my heart. Is this the perfect remake or sequel or whatever? No, but like it hit the marks it needed to hit, which is fun kills, good creepy acting, a fun paced movie. Yeah, there was a lot of obnoxious jump scares. The movie also was lit kind of dark. Did you feel it? It was just like dark. It was 
kind of hard to see in some spots. I don't know if it was just the projection of ours or not, but a lot of the jump scares were pretty annoying. Just like two, like two over the top and too many consecutively. Fucking hurt my ears after a while. I don't know if that's just my old madness, but I'm just like, my God, turn it down. Turn it down. <laughs> like freaking out. It hit all the things that I wanted it to hit as an Evil Dead fan. And I think that if you're an Evil Dead fan, you're going to dig it. And it's a new take on something new. If it's your first time into the series, I would highly, highly, highly recommend going back and watching like Evil Dead 2. And then even the 2013 remake to kind of see how they redid everything. And especially Evil Dead. I mean, Evil Dead 1, of course. But Evil Dead 2, I think is just... It's Sam Raimi at perfection. It's, dare I say, the best B-horror film of all time. Evil Dead 2. I would probably put it up there. All in all, 7 out of 10. I think it's a fun movie to see. I think that if you don't have anything going on this weekend, go check it out. And I think if you're plum busy, I think you should just drop those plans and go see it anyways. Horror fans are eating good right now. If you love horror, go support the movie. Be sure to, you know, go support your local movie theater too. Come on. What the fuck are we doing? If I had a horror film and there was children in it, I would make it an orphanage and I would kill all the children. And the only people to survive are the janitor. Fucking thunder, dude. Scare me. That's God being like, you say what now? <laughs> yeah, I don't know.